Please join me, ladies and gentlemen, in welcoming our friend, Mayor Julian Castro. Thank you very much, Rhonda, for that introduction, and to Comerica Bank, and to all of the sponsors who are here. Let's give our sponsors a big round of applause for their support. Well, good afternoon. It's great to be here at uh, the North Chamber. Always good to visit uh, with you, Duane, and uh, the staff. All the excellent things that y'all are doing are having a terrific impact, not just on the north side of San Antonio, but throughout the city. I also uh, want to thank uh, Brad Rollins and the board of directors of the North Chamber for your leadership. Uh, I know that uh, all of you have your own professional endeavors, things that you're doing in business in our community. It's a, a great service to our community that you give the time that you do to steering the North Chamber very well. Uh, I also want to just acknowledge my colleagues. I know they were introduced before, but I'd like to ask them to stand up. I see uh, Ron. And uh, I saw Diego earlier. Where are they at? Oh, there's uh, Ivy and Chris. Thank you all very much for joining us today. And I'm not sure if Cheryl is here, but uh, we have the finest city manager in the United States of America. She's doing a great job, and uh, I'm sure she sends her regards. Well, this is often, uh, in our minds at the office, this is like uh, the state of the city part two. If I got something wrong earlier in the year, I can adjust it right now. Uh, this is always a great opportunity for me to share with you the vision that we have in San Antonio at City Hall. We had a spectacular July in this city. Toward the end of the month, uh, toward the beginning of the month, we found out that our unemployment rate was at one of its lowest uh, levels in five years, that our economy continues to get stronger and stronger in the city. A few days later, we got word at City Hall that San Antonio remains the only city in the top 10 by population with a AAA bond rating from each of the major rating agencies in the United States because of its great management and fiscal discipline. We also, in July, were ranked second in a study that looked at something that is not often talked about but is actually very important to economic competitiveness in the 21st century, and that's brain gain. All of us have heard this idea over the years that San Antonio and cities like it have suffered from a brain drain, but this study found that San Antonio ranked second to Austin in terms of the amount of brain gain, the number of people with a college degree moving into the city and staying here. And not just moving in, but being created, coming up through the ranks in San Antonio. And finally, toward the end of the month, with our health director, Dr. Schlenker, we announced that according to CDC information, the adult obesity rate in San Antonio had declined over the last couple of years from 35.1% to 28.5%. All of us have seen the bad list that the city has been on over the years, the kind of list that you want to get off of. And, throw the magazine away and don't want to think about it. The fact is that this is good news because it marks the first time that anybody can remember when San Antonio is underneath the statewide average in terms of adult obesity. What all those things say to me is that our city is moving because of the hard work of all of you and so many San Antonians in their business endeavors, in their professional activities, as employees going to work and working hard, and with good leadership all around, our city is undeniably moving in the right direction. We've gone to work over the last few years doing our part at City Hall to supplement the work of our schools to produce brain power through the creation of Cafe College, College Week, and most recently, with pre-K for SA. In just a couple, in just one week actually, 
700 students will walk through the doors of the first two centers of excellence for pre-K education in our city. 700 more young people who are guaranteed an excellent beginning to their educational careers. 700 more four-year-olds who come from challenging circumstances that are starting life on the right track, who one day can be our business owners, can be our public sector leaders, can be our opinion leaders in the community, our innovators, our small business owners, we're working with our school districts to ensure that San Antonio is a city in the future that produces the best educated young people in Texas in a way that expects more from everybody, expects more from the students by requiring them to do the work, and pay attention to their studies, expects more from parents by requiring them to be involved in their child's education, to show up to the PTA meetings and the meet the teacher nights and to do homework with their children, requiring more from teachers and working more days and longer hours, requiring more from administrators to be the best professionals out there, and also, frankly, requiring more from ourselves as citizens who are willing to invest in the educational future of our young people. The focus of the last few years and the next few years will be to create success in 21st century industries for our city, in the new energy economy, in aerospace, in automotive manufacturing, in information technology and security. And I'm glad to say that we're making progress through CPS Energy's efforts, through the efforts of Wayne Alexander and the board at Port San Antonio, through the efforts of all of your companies, and sometimes in ways that are not exactly what we expect. One of the largest IT departments in our city, perhaps the largest, is at USAA. Who would think when you think about USAA, you think of this traditional insurer, but it's giving opportunity to folks in a 21st century sector in spades, along with companies like Rackspace Hosting that continue to grow very rapidly. Later this year, we will kick off Cafe Commerce. If it sounds like Cafe College, that's intentional. It's meant to be the one-stop shop for entrepreneurs for folks with a dream, to start their own business, to go through the hoops that all of you know that you have to do. We know that most businesses don't make it even to five years. They fail because they're undercapitalized or because they can't get together other resources of, of talent or of knowledge that are necessary to prosper. Cafe Commerce is meant to take square aim right at that to help fill those gaps. Two years ago, I came here and announced that for the first time ever, we would invest our bond money, $30 million, in connecting 281 and 1604 on the northern end. I'm proud to announce that in 2012, the voters of San Antonio said yes to that, and that by 2016, now, I know that sounds like a long way away. This is 281. It takes a little bit of time. <laughs> that in the middle of 2016, we'll have those connector ramps completed. We're also working on infrastructure in the medical center area, on UTSA Boulevard, on Hardy Oak, on Redland Road, on Blanco Road, on a whole host of places in our city that are part and parcel of folks being able to move around conveniently for the purpose of leisure or for business. We've also invested in our parks. The dream that Mayor Peak once had of creating 
a ring around the city of linear parks is closer and closer to coming true. And that Mayor Hardberger and Judge Wolf have had of creating a grand linear parkway along our beautiful San Antonio River will be complete because of their efforts in just about a year. And finally, the last part of this vision, the last part of achieving a prosperity for all of us is to ensure that that prosperity belongs to everybody in our community. See, over the last week or so, something different has happened at City Hall. <clears throat> I got into this business because I had a chip on my shoulder about our city. I always felt that our city could be the greatest city in the United States. I really did. I want to outcompete Austin. Every time I see Austin on a list ahead of San Antonio, it makes me angry. I literally, it ruins my day. I don't feel like eating. Call the mayor of Austin up, and I'm always anxious to see what's going on over there. The last week at City Hall, we've been torn up by an issue related to who belongs in our community. We've been considering what's called a non-discrimination ordinance. Some of y'all may wonder, why in the world is he bringing this up to the North Chamber? The reason is that any community that is going to prosper in the 21st century must be a community that is open to everyone, that respects everyone, where everyone belongs, and we have no second-class citizens. It must be a San Antonio that says, no matter who you are, as long as you're willing to abide by the law, to be a, a person who works hard, that you're welcome here. Our non-discrimination ordinance is about trying to ensure that folks, whether they're gay or lesbian or transgender, have the same opportunity to eat a meal in a restaurant or compete for a city contract as any one of us in this room. I can't imagine what would happen if San Antonio said no. We don't agree with that. There's a reason that all of the other major Texas cities have already said yes. There's a reason that the vast majority of Fortune 500 companies already have a similar policy in place and that reason isn't just because it's the right thing to do to both respect people's individual beliefs but also protect everyone from being discriminated against. It's because it makes business sense. Then I don't see any reason why San Antonio can't become one of the greatest cities in the United States. People often say in our city, and I hate to hear it, We'll never be like Houston or Dallas. If what they mean is that we're never going to have exactly the same physical look of a Houston or a Dallas, or never going to have the same kind of galleria, or maybe the rodeo won't be as big, then yeah, I probably agree with you. But if what you mean is that San Antonio will never be as prosperous as those cities, I disagree. And we have a spectacular example of that in Detroit. Just a few decades ago, Detroit was one of the biggest and most prosperous cities in this nation in the world. And today, it's a city in crisis, with its population shrunk by more than 60%. San Antonio is an example of the other side of the coin. If all of us can continue to work together and make the right investments, and pursue our own individual success, but also have enough wisdom to invest in those things that can lift us all up as a community, then I believe that we can create the most prosperous community in this nation. Thank you very much.
big round of applause for Mayor Castro. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we'd like to thank you, Mom. To